President Bola Tinubu is set to meet U.S. President Joe Biden on an exclusive invitation. The doors meeting may be on the sidelines of the United Nations Assembly in New York, scheduled to run from September 18 to 26, 2023. It's starting today, actually. So the breakfast this morning, we'll be taking a look at this as our first hot topic. As the country grapples with insecurity problems, on the show this morning, we'll be looking at improving intelligence and stopping attacks on security personnel, military, police, air force, and the like. We'll also be taking a look at the stories that made it to the front pages of some national dailies and of the press with an analyst joining us to discuss them. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. I am Maureen Menon Weziwe. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. It's always a pleasure knowing that you're there and watching us. It's a Monday morning, so what's your mindset like today? Because that's the question we always ask. We're hoping that you have a positive mindset and you're going into this week. Don't say, oh crap, it's a Monday again. <laughs> Just say, thank God, it's another Monday that I'm going to work and put food on the table of my family. Indeed. Uh, I also learned that one of the best ways uh, to look at Monday on a more positive note is to prepare during the weekend mm -hmm. so that Monday doesn't start off being such a stressful day for you. Mm -hmm. You know, set the tone in a way that Monday becomes a stepping stone. Hmm. for you and try also to clear your table as a friday so that you don't <laughs> you don't t get leftovers on monday when you come and it's like you're carrying the work of the last week into the next week uh, that's also a tip that can help you face monday very very well you have nothing that is carried over from last week exactly to, so thank god it's monday and you know this thing about mindset that we keep talking about is such a powerful thing mm -hmm. having a very positive mindset and telling yourself i can do this or i can achieve this you know i just achieved something very great recently mm -hmm. and that's <laughs> I, I, I can't wait. I'm just, that. I'm just, don't, don't even try it. <laughs> anyway, now I can drink tea without sugar and I'm okay with it. Really? Mm -hmm. I had to struggle with that. I never thought I could achieve being able to drink tea, being able to drink coffee without sugar or honey, especially honey, mm. which I now use. I've been using that for some years. And I just couldn't, um, I thought it was something I couldn't do mm. to drink my tea or a uh, coffee without some drop of my sweet honey. And, and there are some people who will think it's not an achievement, but try it. You will f you'll find out that it's really oh, a big one. To discipline big yourself deal. to do what you think is good for you, it's a very, very great achievement. It's just like you tell yourself, okay, when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to do five push-ups. Mm -hmm. You think in the first few weeks, it's a, an easy thing. And yeah. as time goes on, you wake up and you're like, okay, in the afternoon when I come back, <laughs> yeah. in the evening when I come back, okay, I'm going to hit the gym on Monday. The Monday never comes yeah. and all that. Discipline is a very fundamental thing to it achieving is. whatever you want to achieve. And a lot of us do not have that. Yeah, and so if you've been dealing with that sugar thing or sweet tooth as they call it, mm -hmm. You can achieve it, really, because you get to a certain age and your body tells you, mm -hmm. common sense tells you that you need to drop certain things. And sugar is one of them. Mm -hmm. Sugar is one of them. Whichever way it comes, whether honey or, you know, the, 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 the sugar itself, the refined sugar, you need to get rid of it. At least cut it down to a reasonable uh, quantity on a weekly basis, not even on a daily basis. And so it's there also, you go. Yeah, sorry. It's, it's also, it's also um, a time to tell yourself that processed foods, generally, you should cut down on them if you cannot uh, do away with them totally. It's amazing how in Nigeria a lot of people eat some things just to show class. You know, you have, you have 
food that we have, indigenous food that we have, that might be really good, but you don't want that. You don't want an orange, for instance. You want the juice because it is in a supermarket. You can get it. The orange is too local for you. <laughs> you have yam. You don't want to eat that. You want to eat pizza because sometimes you can even fly to Italy to get a pizza that you come and eat and all that. Then if you carry your your children to the mall and give them all this sugary food and make them look big. Uh, you say, ah, oh, they're looking healthy and all that. So it gets to a time you realize that class has got nothing to do with it. Yeah, if, you, if you want to stay healthy, you stay more natural than, than artificial. Definitely. That's what it is. Definitely. Mm. <clears throat> all right, so we'll give you our top trending this morning. And just before we get into that, there were some trending videos yesterday. Mm. Uh, I don't know how true that is because of the palliatives in one of these states. Um, mm. the, the, the commissioner uh, for <laughs> women affairs or something yes. was beaten thoroughly by the, <laughs> by, like the thoroughly. <laughs> by the chairman of a particular party. And, you know, whether it is true or false, but we also know that these palliatives are being shared um, according to parties. Whether we like it or not, that's what is happening. Yeah. So a party that's in charge in a particular state, they take care of their people, and not just their people, people who are chieftains and close to the yeah, nucleus of the party. Yes. Foot so, soldiers. so what about people who have decided to not to do partisan politics? Mm -hmm. They just want good governance, and they just want to go and vote. They don't want to carry card of any party. What about the people who belong to another party, which is an opposition that should keep you on your toes, which is very critical also in the democratic setting? So all these people are going to be removed from the palliatives. From the equation. Yes. So now, first of all, you know, I haven't seen the video, but I've heard about it. And first of all, you don't beat a woman. For no reason, you don't beat a woman. I, I, you know, when you said thoroughly beaten or beaten thoroughly, I laughed because, you know, my people say bad thing, they make person laugh. It's, it's crazy yes, it, to it, think that they could get to oh that dear. level yeah. over these palliatives. And it's become so ridiculous. Even if it's a verbal insult, it's, it's uncalled for. Yeah. And whoever made it or gave the opportunity to this person to insult another because of palliatives mm -hmm. should, be, should be the one to blame. Because if there were no palliatives in the first place, palliatives that people are rushing to get, maybe this kind of thing wouldn't have happened when fuel subsidy was here, nobody insulted anybody else because of uh, fuel subsidy or anything. And the people who were the culprits have gotten away with it. We're not hearing anything about it. Mm -hmm. So now they're bringing, okay, in another state, there were 3,000 something people that were given these palliatives, and then others were asked to wait uh, for the next batch, which means this first 3,000 something will not get any more. It will be another batch for the next month. 3,000 something in a state, which will be at least 5 million people. And 3,000 something are benefiting in a month. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones that will feed for that you month. Know, the palliative oh, has been described as being not well thought out, and, uh, which is why some people are saying, don't, don't share all these things you're sharing, rice, beans, or granite oil, palm oil. Some as ridiculous as we saw them in Nasarawa State, although that has been investigated. And we understand that a few people have been caught, uh, you know, some government officials and their collaborators at the market mm. where these palliatives have been diverted to and been sold. You know, channel, the, make the palliatives something, you know, um, structures, put structures in place with these palliatives that people, everyone can benefit from. That is not uh, just... Uh, uh, targeted at a uh, few thousands of people when you have millions of people that need this help. So, yes, it's, it's, I understand that um, the Labour Minister has called for a meeting and um, NLC definitely is shunning that meeting. They haven't had a good rapport with him. Uh, the TUC, yes, they've been having cordial relationship with him, but definitely not the NLC. And the NLC is, uh, is, is, is gearing for a showdown. Mm. They're, they're gearing for a shutdown. They, so. there was, they, were, they gave two weeks or so. Which they, will that ultimatum maybe, is going to yes, it's, it's going elapse to, on Friday, I think. Yeah. So if that happens, a lot of things will be grounded. And, you know, I don't know how we define terms in Nigeria. I think definitions are different 
from global definitions. Palliatives are supposed to be things that will be uh, will be like a placeholder until the real thing comes. Maybe okay, there's fuel scarcity, and then the government is buying from other sources and giving to people until when they can supply correctly, mm -hmm. or there is food scarcity or something, and then they're giving some kind of money or something. That's palliative. But this one, you're using palliatives for something that should last forever, so to speak, because after six months, it will be phased out. So what is the thing that these palliatives were standing for? Just helping us to hold body, as we say in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. What is that thing that is coming to us? Yeah, well, while we're see? talking about palliatives, there are indications that fuel, the price of fuel may go up again. So <laughs> the market is already uh, sending that warning out. Okay. And that's something we definitely cannot afford. I mean, how many Nigerians can afford to buy fuel if it goes any higher than that? And not just fuel, gas. And on gas, the news, this morning, that gas yesterday. may get to as high as 18,000 naira, oh dear. which is something that Nigerians, no Nigerian would be willing to pay for. I saw, I saw news, a news item mm. this morning or yesterday where um, uh, the air, there was air bombardment yeah. on facilities that they call illegal refineries. Okay, so they are refineries, but illegal ones, and they are being destroyed. And some people... Instead of, of being converted. Yes, out of the opinion, why not get this? Even if you're arresting them, uh, even if you're trying to convert them into something legal, or even whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. it's like having a genius. If you watch the movie Catch Me If You Can, you know, he was, he was a criminal, so to speak, but a very intelligent one. That was now arrested, as it were, but they used their intelligence to catch even greater criminals and mm -hmm. all that. So... You've seen people, maybe because of um, the shortage of a particular thing, mm -hmm. have devised means to do one or two things, and you're catching them. Why not look at that technology and see what can be harnessed from that? I'm not saying I'm encouraging people doing illegal refineries and all that, but it shows that there's a possibility of doing something like that locally that may not cost a fortune. And you're not looking into it. Your own is just bombardment. You, you catch a full ship of, with millions of liters of crude on the high sea. You burn it. You burn you, it. You, I, I just can't understand. Unbelievable. All right, let's go to the top trending. And the first top trending has to do with the fact that, um, well, a lot is happening with the CBN officials. No fewer than 20 persons with links to the Central Bank of Nigeria and its immediate past governor, Godwin Emefele, have so far been questioned by the special investigators appointed by President Bola Tinubu to probe the Apex Bank. Among those interrogated were the four deputy governors of the Apex Bank, some directors and some drivers, including Emefele's. Even the drivers who drove the directors, especially those directly under the deputy governors, were interviewed. Officials of the Nigeria Security Printing and Minting Company and those in charge of all the intervention programs were also invited. Also summoned were some officials of the NIRSAL, Microfinance Bank, Nigeria Interbank Settlement System, PLC. The special investigators paid a quiet visit to the Nigeria Incentive-Based Risk Sharing System for Agricultural Lending. PLC on Friday in furtherance of their assignment. However, no arrest was made on that occasion. It has also been reported that the Executive Secretary of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Shoaib Ahmed, and his deputy, Ihani Anyahara, were invited to appear before the panel in connection with the preparation of the CBN audited financial statements from 2016 to 2022. Some of those summoned were reportedly detained till the following day in the event their interrogation took longer than anticipated or if further documents were needed from their offices which were not brought along. The special investigator's invitation may also be extended to retired directors connected to the case. A parallel investigation of the CBN is being carried out by the Department of State Service, that's the DSS, under the Interagency Committee. It was the interagency committee that detained Deputy Governors Aisha Ahmed and Kingsley Obiora. President Tinubu 
In the July 28, 2023 letter appointed Obaze, the founding executive secretary of the FRC, to probe the activities of the Apex Bank and its related entities. He is charged with looking into the books of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, that's the NNPCL, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, the FRS, and other government business entities, which the president in the letter he personally signed said was in continuation of government's anti-corruption fight in accordance with the fundamental objectives set forth in Section 15, Subsection 5 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. They should have been very definite to mention some of these uh, uh, chieftains that were detained and all that. It, it's, not, it's not enough to detain a driver. And, uh, you know, the acting um, CBN governor, when Emefile was arrested, was part of the executive. So <laughs> if you're arresting everybody, uh, was he arrested as well? Mm. And is he going to be invited if he has not been arrested and detained as well? Because Emefile is there, and if there are other people, uh, people who connived with him mm -hmm. to do whatever he's going to do, they're talking about trillions here now, like uh, trillions of Naira. So if these people are going to be invited, was this a immediate past acting governor of the CBN. Not part, part of, of it. it. <clears throat> so they are now arresting or inviting people up to the drivers. And I don't know how, how that is going to be. Maybe they want information from the Definitely, drivers. definitely. Well, but, uh, you know, is. a new CBN governor has been nominated, mm -hmm. uh, Cordoso. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, because also. A, lo so a lot it, is going on there. Yeah, so let everybody be investigated. Let there be no secret cows and let us see that they are being investigated and the needful is being done because uh, it's not enough to just say it on paper and then let the people go. NNPCL, it's a good thing that they are going to be investigated. I'm sure the kind of things that will come out there will not see the light of day because they will be so damning on a lot of people that are so influential in this country. Uh, because if you are probing NNPCL, that means the subsidy uh, palava will mm -hmm. come up. The Everything that we've been experiencing will come up. And then we'll see how it goes. Femi Fallon, now, SAN, yes. is asking for the prosecution of Omir Fele. Yes. Uh, he has questions to answer with regards to... That's, that's exactly what all Nigerians are saying. He has questions to answer with regards to the Naira redesign, which so many Nigerians uh, stranded. Mm -hmm. Some even lost their lives. And asking for the CBN to rebuild the banks that were destroyed because of this uh, mm -hmm. uh, money uh, redesign. And then... There of was course, and then the, his boss... Mm -hmm. who gave approvals, yeah. permissions. In America, <laughs> Trump is being investigated. <laughs> Biden even is, is, is facing, there's a possibility of impeachment because of a lot of things that are happening. And like he's the sitting president. Why can't things like that happen in mm -hmm. Nigeria? Mm -hmm. you know? So if it's not happening to ordinary people, when will it happen to a president? Well... Anyway, uh, we also, because of uh, some of these things, that's why SERAP has gone up again. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has filed a lawsuit against President Bola Tinubu over the failure to stop the former governors who are now serving as ministers in his administration from collecting life pensions and other retirement benefits from their states while they serve as ministers. Uh, in a statement on Sunday, SERAP Deputy Director Kolawole Olua Dari identified the ministers as Nyesom Wike, a former River State Governor, Belo Matawale Zamfara, Adeboyega Oyetola Oshun, a former governor uh, listed in the suit include Badaru Abubakar of Jigawa, David Umahi Ebonyi, Simon Lalong Plateau, Atiku Bagudu Kebi, and Ibrahim Gaidam of Yobe. Uluwadari said the suit was filed last Friday at the Federal High Court in Lagos. The rights group is seeking an order of mandamus to compel President Tinubu to instruct the former governors who are now serving as ministers to stop collecting life pensions and other retirement benefits from their respective states. According to Sarah, uh, compelling and directing President Tinubu to stop the former uh, governors from collecting any retirement benefits while serving as ministers in the current grave economic realities in the country would serve uh, the public interest, and they described the appointment of those who collect life pensions and other retirement benefits as ministers in uh, as arbitrary and unlawful exercise of discretion. 
and presidential power of appointment. I'm just wondering, is the president still collecting pensions from Lagos State as a former governor of Lagos State mm -hmm. and then collecting as president? And why are the governors? In fact, the life pensions the governors and political appointees are paid is for what? After serving four years, you're collecting pension that someone who served 36 years uh, will have to serve another 100 and something before they can collect that kind mm -hmm. of pension. Mm -hmm. So does it really make sense? Questions have been raised. Questions have been raised. And the first one is the one that you just raised. Is the president still collecting you know, pensions uh, for being a former governor of Lagos State? Mm -hmm. uh, and, so, and then questions have also been raised uh, about, uh, that's those who are ignorant about the victories that Serap has recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, they think Serap is just... Yeah, all the time. Yeah, you see on, yeah, on, yeah. on, on yeah, X. But and we, we, we need saying. a Serap. And we need more Serap's. To be honest, we yeah. need more syrups. And in case you're wondering um, how effective syrup has been, syrup have won several cases in court. Mm -hmm. And we want them to continue doing this, yeah. to, to continue to ask these questions. And we need more syrups to ask more questions so that these government officials will be put on their toes mm -hmm. to understand that people are watching and people are keenly invested in these things. Nigerians are not just folding their arms and saying, well, let them do what they like and leave and whatever, whatever, and throwing their arms in, the, in their hands in the air saying, what can we do? No, mm. Nigerians are beginning to take actions, going to court and seeking for judgment over our collective wealth. Yeah, and, you know, saying that we need more syrup doesn't mean that you have to go and form an organization. Rally around the people who are already speaking out. We have the social media for crying out loud. And we know how if Nigerians rally around a, a particular cause, how effective that, that thing becomes. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't get 100%, you'll get some significant changes because everybody is talking about it. For instance, now... Let me use the entertainment industry. A, a young boy lost his life, and they're blaming particular people. Right now, all the shows of the people who are being blamed are being canceled. Mm -hmm. There was a show one of them was supposed to have in America to, to tour about 15 uh, cities in America, which would have raked millions for them. Mm -hmm. And now that show is canceled mm -hmm. because everybody in Nigeria is talking about justice for Mobad. Mm. So if people can rally around a particular cause, it gets things done. So why not we do the same thing when it comes to um, political issues, policy issues, uh, things that really affect all of us? We tend to just do this for entertainment. We are watching Bibi Niger, for instance, and everybody's watching and voting. You ask them to go out to vote they, in the election, they will not go. You, there's something that happens on in, the, in the entertainment industry. Somebody marries a second wife, everybody's talking about mm -hmm. it. And a policy that will affects your life is being formulated and you're not saying anything about it. So we need more syrups means that you should lend your voice, no matter how small it is, when all of us lend our voice to a particular cause, things will happen. Maybe not a hundred percent, but it will happen. It will definitely happen. All right, you're still watching the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It is the Mindset Monday edition. We'll take a break now and come back with Off the Press. You want to know what are those stories on the front pages of the National Dailies this morning? They are on.